Let's take a look at how we can use some totally free WordPress add-ons to customize the shop pages with WooCommerce and Elementor free. Let's quickly take a look at the end results first, and then we'll get stuck into recreating the layout. So this is the kind of thing we're going to be looking at creating. We've got a great looking header at the top, and then we have our featured products, which is a nice little carousel. We can hover over, we can add to the cart directly. We can take a look at the actual product itself. We also come down, we have a range of latest products. And again, we have things like add to cart. We have a nice simple way of opening up, seeing a quick view, all color coded to match in with the style of the overall site itself. That's what we're gonna create. And I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. Now bear in mind, this is just an example of how you can let your creative juices flow and build something truly unique with the tools on offer here today. So to build our custom shop page, we're going to be using essential add-ons for Elementor. We're going to be using the free version in this, so there's no cost to you whatsoever. And like I say, this is all done with Elementor free as well. So I've already gone ahead, downloaded and installed that and activated it. I've also gone ahead and created a header section for our shop page. And as you can see, I've filtered out all the different Elementor widgets based upon WooCommerce. Now we have a couple of different widgets inside you we don't have access to because they're still showing up because we've got Elementor free installed and it's kind of an upsell. So anything that's got a little padlock in the corner, we can't use those. However, now we have essential add-ons for Elementor installed, the free version, we have several more options, product grid, carousel, and the review. Now we're gonna to focus today on the product grid and the product carousel. So first of all, let's take a look at adding the grid in. We'll drag and drop that into our design and just make a little bit of space above and below for this. So let's just add a little bit of padding around there. Okay, there we go. So we now have basically a product listing. Simple as that, you could leave it at this point if you wanted to. However, we do have a lot more controls over what we can do. First of all, we've got the layout options and we can choose between three different versions inside the free version. We've got grid, we've got list, and we have masonry. So if you have very different kind of sizes, masonry might be a great option for you. However, for this example, we're gonna go down and choose the list option. You can see underneath them, we can choose from a range of different predefined styles using the presets option. In this example, we have four different ver versions. And as you can see, if we just step through those, we get slightly different variations upon the design. Some would look better set up to be one column, Others look better set up to be two columns. So you can configure this to your own taste. I'm gonna leave this set to preset one and set this to be two columns. There we go, that looks pretty good. If we hop into the product settings, this is where we can fine tune the way things look. You can see we can choose based upon the source. We have the choice between products and if you had Elemental Pro installed, you could use Dynamic. However, if we use, try to use that option, we can't use it because we don't have those Dynamic Tags options. So unfortunately, that's not available to us. You can choose how you want to filter your products. So we can see recent products is the one we've got selected by default, but we can choose between featured, best-selling, sale products and top-rated products. Now, if you've got a pretty new store, things like top-rated products and best-selling, probably not going to be the best way to go about it because you don't really have that many sales right away. However, as your store grows or if you have a more established store, you could use any of those options. We leave this set to recent products for this example, but you can choose whatever works for you. We can then choose to order them. And as you can see, there's a lot of options in how we want to order things. Generally, you're probably going to want to go either by price or by something like the name of the item. We leave this set to be something like product title. That makes a little bit more sense. And you can see that now orders things into alphabetical order. We can choose ascending or descending, and we can also set up the product count. Now, currently, I've got four products, but I could easily add more products in here if I wanted to. And you can see that shows up inside our design. So all really simple. The offset is basically, if you don't want the very first product in your particular source to show up, you can set an offset. And this works great if you're using multiple different versions of this layout or you're using a carousel with it. So for example, if we choose an offset of one, you can see that the star cactus now disappears. So if we're using that as a featured product at the top in a slightly different design, then we can make sure we don't have duplicates of the same product. So pretty cool and we'll come back to that a little later. You can then come through and choose product categories. You may not want to have all of your recent items from all of your categories if you have a large shop or you're creating custom pages for a specific type of product, for example, cactus or plants. So what we can do is we can just simply come in here and we can choose the option to only display products that meet the criteria from a particular category. So we might say we only want cactus inside here and now you can see that filters it to only show the cactus. Then we've got some basic styling options and some feature options. So for example, we can choose what title HTML we want to use. Currently that's set to H2, but you might want to set that to something like H3 and have it styled in a certain way. 
So you have all those options, including divs, spans, and paragraphs. So you can style those as you see fit. Do you want to show product ratings, product price, and short description? Well, you can enable or disable those. So for example, if you've got a new store, then showing something like the product rating probably isn't going to make a lot of sense. We can also control the number of words that are going to be displayed. So if you take certain things out and you want to add a little bit more text inside there, you can easily do that. And you can also choose exactly what you want at the end of that. It's called the expansion indicator. It's just basically the dots or whatever you kind of want to insert at the end of your 15 words. You can also then choose what size image you want to use. So if you find that your images look a little bit rubbish, you might want to tweak that and use a higher resolution version to get sharper, crisper images, depending upon how you kind of lay things out. So bigger images, you probably want to put a bigger image size in there. If you've enabled the compare feature, you can also have that option enabled. You can see that adds an extra third button inside there where we can do comparisons. I'm going to disable that for this example. We then got the add to cart and you can see we can choose to customize this. So currently it's using just add to cart as the default option. If you want to customize that, you can do that as well. So we can expand that and we have five different options. We can change the buy now to buy immediately or whatever you kind of want to set inside there. So pretty cool to see that. And if you were using Elementor Pro, you could then use the dynamic tags function. So it's good to see we have those options included. We'll leave it as it is though for this example. The load more option, if you're using that for your pagination, then that'll put the load more button and Underneath. So what you can do is you can enable that and you can see that pulls in the load more button and you can click and that'll load in more of the items that you have. So if we come back and set our layout to, for example, we only wanted to have four products, you can see now the load more button is there. We can click load more and then that will, on the live page at least, load in more of our products. So it's cool to see that you've got that as an option. We'll just disable that. And if you want to, you can choose just ordinary pagination. So we can enable that. And you can see that now shows us how many different pages we've got. We can adjust the previous and next label. So you have options on how you prefer to lay things out. Finally, we've got the buttons option. So we have quick view enabled as default, but if you wanted to take that off, you could disable it. It's up to you. And again, you've got the option to set what title tag you want to use inside there. And also the preset styles for how everything would look. Now, there we go. So that's how it looks if we click and if we change, let's just enable this again. And if we just choose to enable the option for preset two, you'll see we get a slightly different layout and we still have the same kind of option. So I prefer preset one looks a little bit better, a little bit cleaner, a little bit frustrating. It keeps jumping back off there, but hey ho. If we come into style now, we can configure everything. So at the moment, the buttons are not really in keeping with the color scheme that we're using. So easy to change all of that information. We can simply come down to our buttons, for example, and we can change our background color. And we're going to change this over now to the saved color, which is the global color used for the buttons on this particular site. And if you want to, you can adjust the board radius so we can make those a little bit more pill shaped. So it's a bit more in keeping again with the design that we have for this particular store. Incidentally, if you're wondering what the store is, it's just using one of the free templates as part of Astra. So no paid for options inside here. And if you want to duplicate this, you could do that with no cost whatsoever. Okay, so we've seen how to style those kinds of things. If we commit to pagination, for example, we can change the various different things inside here as well. You've got your pop-up. You can adjust all the different styling inside there to make sure everything is as consistent as possible. So for example, if we click to open that up, we can see the add to cart button doesn't make a lot of sense because it's a different color. Well, we can come in and we can adjust that. So change that over again we'll choose our global style color so that looks pretty cool everything is in keeping so you've got a ton of options on here to configure and style this to make sure everything looks and feels exactly as you want to fit in the consistency of your particular store so now that we've inserted our basic product grid what if we want to use a carousel just to have a little bit more attention to the top products well let's just add that into our design so we'll drop that at the top of our page and you can see that now pulls in a predefined layout. And again, we've got various different layouts if you have the free version. So we can choose from something that's in keeping to what we are looking to achieve. So you can see pretty cool. We can choose a preset that we like. Let's just go for something like, let's go for this one. Okay, so once we do that, again, we've got options now to show various different things. So we don't want to show that product rating. We can disable that inside there. We've also got a query, so we can just choose exactly what we want to show inside here as well. So again, we're going to just come in and you can see we've got product categories. We'll choose cactus from there. And we can choose product tags if you want to, product types, an offset inside here. So at the moment, this doesn't look quite right because it's going to duplicate exactly what we have underneath. And this is where that offset value comes in really handy. 
Let's just quickly remove the product category so I've got enough products in here to show you what I'm talking about. So with that being said, we've now got the option for our products. Let's come into the second product grid. And what we're gonna do inside there is drop into the product settings and we're gonna make sure that we've got an offset. So at the moment you can see, for example, we have this rattlesnake tail, which is also replicated inside our slider. So if we just increase this to something like four, you can see that now removes that duplicate entry from there and we now have different types of products in the two different sections with no overlap. So you can get creative with this and you can easily set up some sort of real eye grabbing images at the top and really push your products. Whereas underneath you've got ones that are sort of like the rest of the range. It's a great way of being able to sort of draw attention. Now hopping back to our carousel, we have lots of other options inside here. So if we come into the carousel settings, for example, we can choose the number of visible products, the type of effect we want. We've got slide and cover flow. Personally, I think the cover flow is a little dated. It's going back to an Apple kind of thing from many years ago. Let's put that back to slide. Uh, I'm going to turn off the autoplay because I kind of find that a little bit on the frustrating side. You can set up a grab cursor if you want to. You can set infinite loop. It's entirely up to you. You can also set up what kind of navigations you want. Do you want to have arrows on there? Do you want image dots? You've got tons of different options. So set up exactly what you want. You can choose the direction you want to go in. We've already seen the query. And if you want to, you can style and configure the way the sale or stock out badge is actually laid out. So we have various different options inside there. So combining these together, you have a lot of different great ways of being able to create various different kinds of layouts for your product pages. With a little time and effort, you could very easily create much more interesting shop pages using this collection of free tools. However, we do still have one more thing we need to take care of. At the moment, if we try to set the new page as our shop page, we'll have a few problems. Elementor doesn't really let us customize the default WooCommerce shop page, so we need to deal with that next. So to handle this issue, we need to set up a simple redirect. We can do this again with just another totally free tool. So let's take a look at doing that now. Okay, so we're going to be looking for another free plugin. This time we're going to be using the option to redirect. Now there are plenty of different options available, but you can see the number one is redirection. So let's use that. It's got over 2 million active installs. We'll choose that option. But if you've got something else you prefer, use whatever works for you. Let's install that and activate it. And once activated, we can come into the redirection setup. This then basically just gives you some information about how to use this particular plugin. And if you're new to redirection, take a look at it. It will probably help shed some light. Let's just choose start setup though. And we're going to just say, we'll continue monitor permanent. We'll just say continue on all this and we'll finish the setup. That's once that's run through, we can then just carry on and set up our own now custom redirects. So don't be daunted by the way this all looks. It's fairly straightforward. We just need a couple of things we need to choose where we want to redirect from and where we want to redirect to and how we want to redirect it and make sure that we set a few things up. So the source URL is basically where you want to redirect from. In other words, our shop. So if we hop over into our store, there's our URL at the top. All we want to do is just grab the very final bit after our domain name, which is just the actual link to the store itself. So we'll hop back in and we'll simply just paste that in at the top. And there we go. We'll just paste that there and we're done. Next up, we need to set the target URL. In other words, where do we want to redirect it to? And this is going to be our new custom store page. So I've gone ahead, opened that up, and I'm simply going to copy the entire link this time. So we're going to take the entire link, copy that from there, head back over, and we're going to drop that into the target URL. So we'll paste that inside there. So this is saying, if anybody goes here, redirect them here. And then you can choose what type of group you want to put in there. Well, redirection is perfectly fine. That's great. The only thing I would suggest you do is where we've got these options at the end is we simply open that up and enable ignore slash and ignore case. This then should make sure that everything works perfectly throughout the entire site. And this is the thing, when you're using WooCommerce, even though you've only got the one page for your shop, that link back to that normal default store page is all over the place when you're working with a store with WooCommerce. We just want to make sure that that's always captured and redirected to the relevant new page we just created. So finally, we just click add redirect and that's our redirect setup. And you can see it's now listed above. So if we need to make a change to this or edit it, well, we can do that inside here. No problem at all. We can just simply come in and edit or we can disable it. So let's just test this out now to make sure that everything works the way it should do. So let's hop back over to our original store page. And what we'll do is we'll just hit enter and we should find that that will redirect us now to our new products page, which is the one we've just created with all of our new options in place. So we know that all works perfectly fine. 
However, let's just check to make sure it works in other places where WooCommerce uses it. So for example, if we come into our shopping basket, you can see we've got the option to return to shop. And now if we click on that, that'll return us back now to our new custom shop page. So you can see everything is working the way we wanted it to. Now, if you're ready to get more out of WooCommerce, watch this video next. And if you've got value from this video, well, why not hit that thumbs up button? It really does help me out. But if you didn't get value from the video, well, feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice, as that seems to work pretty well too. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. Until next time, take care.